Yeah. Father, we thank you for what you have done so far. We thank you. The last time I was here, it was in June, and it was my first time out of fellowship with the woman of God. And when I came here, I came here with a big bump. <laughs> she didn't even know I was going to have my baby like a couple of weeks after, or a week after, something like that. <laughs> with my big stomach. But I want to thank God for bringing me back here. Not crippled, not lame, not dead. No one calling anyone, come and come to say, you know, one minute of silence. But I thank God. I'm not going to dive into that. Let's, let's leave that. But I thank God. I just wanted to thank God that I'm able to step on this pulpit again. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we glorify you. I thank you, Pastor, my Pastor, Pastor Debbie. Prophetess Debbie. I thank you so much uh, for this ongoing fellowship. We need it in this atmosphere. We need it in this environment. It is time for the children of God to take territory, to take charge of the territory. And Father, we take charge of every territory surrounding the metroplex of Dallas, the city of Dallas. There is something, you see, when, 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 when a shift will come about, when God wants to shift things, hallelujah, you have to be in tune with God's timing, what God is doing. As a child of God. If you are not, you will be left behind. If you are not, you will be slayed. If you are not, you will be taken out. If you are not, you will die, whether physically or spiritually. If you are not a premature, something will take place in your life. Your destiny is dependent on this. Our destiny is dependent on what God is trying to do. We must stay working awake. Hallelujah. We sleep too much. And when I say, I'm not saying you shouldn't sleep physically. Even physically, you have to arise. Deborah said, when I rose in a place of desolation, things began to shift. Hi, the mother of Israel. She had insight. Suddenly, who she was. She was a wife and a mother. But she had insight that no, I'm not just a wife. I'm not just a mother to some children in my home. Wonderful, blessed children that God has given us all. But there are children, spiritual children, that came out of your womb, spiritual womb. Tied to your spiritual destiny for you to go and rescue and deliver them from a place of desolate, a place of slavery, a place of oppression. Are you going to gain insight in this place today? Because if you don't rise, those destiny will not rise. Hallelujah. Why do you think those blood? Those people that were, they were slayed for the gospel, they cry at the halter, at the feet of God, saying, God, when are you going to do this? Because some destinies are tied to their destinies. There is somebody in some village in Kuwait, in Asia, crying because of what God has given to you and what God has put in, in you. There is a little girl, a grown man, wailing and crying daily, say, I'm waiting for you, Deborah. I'm waiting for you, Miriam. I'm waiting for you, Samira. I am waiting for you, Mama. I am waiting for you. You have been eating, sleeping too long. I am here crying. I am hungry. Why do you think Jesus was hungry? I am hungry. Come forth. Rise and come forth. 
I'm broke. I don't have the money to fly. I don't have this. I don't have that. Stop putting your eyes on things that you can't see. Put your eyes on things that you can't see. The invisible God. When you put your eyes on things that are invisible, the invisible God will catapult you like Philip to where you need to be. Thank you, Jesus. We need a voice and we need a sound. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. I woke up today and I heard this song. Thank you, everybody, for being patient with us. You see, I got a little bit, I don't know what happened. Something just happened here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I meant to take it a, a little bit slow. Jumping up and down yesterday at another program, like a few minutes. You see, something is happening in this territory. You know? So I got home last time. I'm like, I think I need to take it easy. I've only had this baby one month. And, you know, and when I always go to my husband to lay hands on me when I'm going to do anything. So yesterday when I went to him, I said, Pastor, I went to him at the office. Pastor, lay hands on me and pray for me. We're leaving. He said, Father, help her, help her, and help her to take care of her health. I'm looking because my blood pressure was actually in the 160s. Yes, yesterday. And I laughed. I said, yes, sir. amen. He said, amen. I said, ah, but that's not the prayer I'm looking for. Pray for me. <laughs> you know, change the prayer. <laughs> so we left. We were there for like five hours. It was almost six hours. When I, we got in the car, I said, let me take my blood pressure again. It was very, very when I say extremely low, like normal. I said, that's what the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit would do. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Some people will look at me and say, what is wrong with this woman? She doesn't want to slow down. She wants to go and show off. She wants to go and hold the... She likes to jump up and now hold in the... Man. No! My will is to do the will of my father. Hey. Hey. He's the God. That gives the children, that gives the husband, that gives us everything. Not that we should leave our home unkept, or we should leave our children unkept. That's no, don't, don't, don't misunderstand my message. What I'm saying is that when it comes to the will of man and the will of God, the will of God overrides the will of man. I don't hone myself, it hones me. I don't know how much time I have, but I have to be in tune with the timing of God. If it says go, go. I was sitting down here when she was preaching. I was just, amen. you see me sometimes, I'll smile. I was just looking at her like, this woman is preaching all my message. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. And God said, uh, I was downloading everything to us. I was downloading to you. Now she's gotten it. I will put a word in your mouth. Come on the pulpit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We have to trust God. When like, that's what like minds would do. What, what does the Bible mean when it says children of God, I want you to have like minds. Meaning I want you to have the mind of Christ. And when you have the mind of Christ, you have one mind. The mind of the Father. The mind of the Father. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, so I was hearing this song. I, I'm sure my husband today is just like this woman. So I, I, this one, I called him. He left early to church. So I called him. I said, Pastor. I was hearing this song, and I know it's you that know that song. I don't know this song well before. I keep hearing this song in my spirit. And I knew God wanted me to sing that song because he wanted to do something through that song here today. So I said, ah, but I don't want to go and sing this song and mess it up. Oh, I want to sing it correctly. But I kept singing it from my sleep, and I kept singing it. But something in me just knew that this is, something is missing from this song. It's not... Complete. So I called Pastor on his way. I said, Pastor, please, there's this song I'm hearing in my spirit. I know that I'm, let me sing it to you, but I know that something is missing out of this. So he said, oh, this is how it is. That's how it is. Then he said, oh, on this part, you're going to stretch it. I said, I don't have time to start stretching song. I only wanted to know the lyrics, <laughs> the, the word of the song. He said, you, I said, he said, well, that's how I sing. I said, that's how you sing it. But I just want to know that song. But anyways, the song is... 
You're a living waters, ever flowing fountain. Live inside of me, flow inside of me. I want you to let that song sink in because I kept singing it until it sank in my spirit. I knew what the father wanted to do with that song. You're the living waters, ever flowing fountain. Come on, somebody hold your belly. Flow inside of me. Live inside of me. Hold your belly again. You're the living waters, ever flowing fountain. Live inside of me. Live inside of me. Flow inside of me. Do you know what it means? For the living waters, flowing fountain, ever flowing fountain that never runs dry, to live inside of you and continues to flow through you, meaning that nations will come to you and drink from you. You, the dry well, there was a time you were in dry well, there was a time you were in a dry land. There was a time your life was like a dry desert. What did God do to Haggai? She was there wondering, 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 wondering with her son in a dry land. She said, let this boy just die. He's just going to die. When you're in a dry land, you can't escape death. But when the living waters come and make a river in that dry land <laughs> and open your eyes to see that where there is nothing left for you, I am a source of living water that will begin to flow for you to drink from. You thought you were nothing. The world thought nothing good of you. The world saw nothing good from you. Can any good come out of this Bethlehem? Can any good come out of this nation? Can any good come out of you? What your mother passed through, you are passing through it. Generational patterns in your life. Will I make it too? You are asking yourself, will I make it through? What my mother could not overcome, will I overcome? What my father could not achieve, will I achieve? Abraham probably asked that question. Because Abraham was not the one that started that journey. He was his father. But his father died a premature death. But God said, no, that promise I will fulfill through you. Don't worry about my saliva. My saliva is anointed. If you are seeing this man is fit, don't worry about that. What your mother or your father could not achieve. The Lord is giving you the key. The Lord is giving you the key. And you will open it to open many doors. You will use it to shut many doors. In your hands, I will give the key of the kingdom. Shalabo satire. You are the glory. You are like the glory, the beauty of God in the midst of tons. And your life is going to shine. There is something on you that brings about the beauty of God. But what do you think the enemy is doing? He will bring men that will tell you you are nothing. He will bring men that will say you are, you are ridiculed. That will harass you, oppress you. Make you feel like you are nothing. You are not worthy. You have no value to you. 
they will abuse you with their mouths, with their hands. Even emotionally, they will abuse you because why the devil wants to use them to break you. Because when the devil knows that when I break you, you will not be able to re review, see, see, see the true, true self that you have, the true person that you have, to be able to do that which God has called you to do. But I tell you that God allows it because he knows that when the enemy comes to break you, that is where his treasure is revealed. The only thing you need is sight, spiritual sight. That when you are broken, it's not to keep you bound, but to keep you to enable, I mean, to, to, to allow you to spread your wings, uh, to come out. Listen, you that you are looking at is not the true you. There is a you inside of you that must emerge out. So when you are broken, it's for that person, the true person, that soul, that soul soul that God bred into that real soul to come out and take up another flesh in the person of Christ I can't even go into that where is that where it's go the pain the grief the wailing father they called me this father they said this to me father there's this limitation father there's this restriction father there's this embargo on my life god there's this and that all these things that we count and complain and grumble about uh, you see submitting to those things uh, lies your true purpose submitting to those things uh, lies your true purpose it took me a while to understand that. Wailing, telling God, you, you promised me this. That if I come to you, you promise me this. How come it's worse? And God said, it's not worse. You are the one that is not just submitting in that place of what I want to show you. That thing that you are passing through, I want to show you something. I want to teach you something. I want to make you from that place. You're too rigid. You're too proud. You too, you, you bold in a way that you, you feel like it's you that has all the power. The woman at the well, she got, God planted that boldness in her. Everything that she will become. Had already been in her. When God made you, everything that you become in life is not something that God will just put anew from anywhere. It's just that when we pray, we are calling forth those things to come about, to come to manifestation. Hallelujah. He's already made you. And that is why he's telling you that I formed you now. I I already imputed all those qualities in you. All this anger that you use for against the world and to fight everybody and that, that. It's the holy anger, the zeal and the passion that are put in you for the things of the kingdom. Hmm. Everything you do in your life right now, if you can just flip it around and use it for the kingdom. You will see that it's not that those, let me tell you, you are flawed so that you will not be able to rely on yourself. Do you think that when you come to Christ, it takes away your flaws? No. No, 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 no. You are new, but the flaws are still there. So that you will not think that you did it by yourself. You will know that there is a God that is doing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to Psalm 46. Have your way, O oh Lord, in our lives. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, O oh Lord, in our lives. Have your been having your way living in your own way nobody will stop me 
nobody can ask me i have my own house i have my own car i have everything or maybe you don't have it but you're still stubborn in your heart living in your own way it is time to give up those ways it doesn't pay it only brings shame and pain everlasting pain hallelujah that it might even lead you to a place where you will suffer turmoil anguish torment where demons will snatch their teeth at you i don't think you want to go there to be in an everlasting darkness crying thirsty no water to drink but here comes the living water, the one that the living water lives inside, uh, telling you, take, take, I want to give you now. Do it when there's still time, do it. Nike will say, just do it. What are you doing exactly? What is the thing that you are doing exactly? Motivational speaker will tell you, go, take it, do it, rise, this, that, to what? To what? They motivate you with all this teaching. You still get home and you are still crying. You are not satisfied. Because it's not the real deal. It's not the real deal. Shalaba Shata. Brother Joseph. Oh, Brother Jacob. Sorry. I've changed your name just now, now, now to Brother J Joseph. <laughs> Brother Jacob. Just small, small, small. As you can rest and give us some sound. Rest, give us some sound. Something with that sound. We're doing something with that sound. It helps the prophet of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Psalm 46. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to make this quick so that I can get into some of this message. No, you guys already preached my message. <laughs> Glory be to God. No wonder we couldn't go and print out this message. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because they blocked the way to the office. The printer at home is not working. So we were going to exit. They blocked it. And I said, no, let's go. Forget about it. Let's go. You know, hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 46. I want to read this to us. God is doing something within um, the Psalms. God is a refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, we would not fear what we are seeing. We, we are not fearing nothing. Even though the earth be removed, we are at the stage where you will see mountains crumbling. Earth being shaken. Earthquakes here and there. Back pants here and there. Argument, dispute, conflicts, wars here and there. Hallelujah. But listen to what the word of God says. Even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters row and be troubled, even though the world, they are troubled, they are roaring, they are complaining, though the, 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 the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river. I want you to alight this place. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. This is talking to you. This is talking to the church of the Lord. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. No matter what you see happen in seasons to come. Know that God is in the midst of his people and you will not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of the dawn. 
Just as when they think that the whole world is crumbling, everything is finished, God will help you at the break of the dawn. The nations will rage and be in disarray. But listen, it says, the kingdoms may be moved. He uttered his voice. I said there is a voice and a sound today. He uttered his voice and the earth, oh, the whole earth melted. He says, all these things is going to happen, but you will not be moved. The Lord of hosts, he said, is with her. Is with her. Whenever you are troubled, whenever there is something ranging in your life uh, and the walls is about to crumble over you, whenever you turn and you see no family, you see no one, says the Lord, I am with you. The God of Jacob, he says, is my refuge. If you could be with my father, Abraham, Jacob, <laughs> Isaac and all the patriarchs and the same. We've seen it. We've read it. If you can be with them, why am I exempted? Why am I exempted? I am only exempted from evil, but I'm not exempted from the mercy of God. Shalabu shata. I am not exempted from the mercy of God. Come, behold the works of the Lord. Who has made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. Can you just hold your peace and I will fight for you? The Egyptians that you saw yesterday, you shall see them no more again. I will be exalted among the nations. No matter what the world say, there is no God. The Bible says only a foolish one, only a foolish man will say that there is no God. I will be exalted in this earth. God is patient. It seems like uh, the world is having an upper hand. But God will be exalted in all nations. Uh, when, sh when, when the four Hebrew boys or the three Hebrew vo boys uh, were told to bow. The three Hebrew boys. When they were told to bow, did God not exalt himself above Nebuchadnezzar? Was Nebuchadnezzar not humbled uh, in the forest for seven years? Uh, hallelujah. Seven is a number of completion. God brought him into that forest. Tested him. Made him see how horrible we, 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 we flesh, we dust, we are. You are nothing but like an animal, filthy. Filthy. Why did you think that... You know, um, I turned 40 this year, and I went into 40 days being pregnant. I went into 40 days um, covenant prayer. And uh, even though I don't think I was faithful as I will, because I, I, I wanted to do it a certain time, all those religious times we set for ourselves, right? And the Lord told me, just do it. I will hear you. Whatever time, if it's night, morning, be with me, I will hear you. But anyway, and then as I was preparing for the program yesterday, the Lord began to take me to the story of Moses. And I began to read it. And um, I showed it to the woman of God afterwards because there was a prayer she prayed. I said, oh, the spirit of the Lord would not depart from you. Look at my book. Look at what I wrote down. But anyways, the Lord was speaking to me through the number 40. And it says, look at what is about to happen in this generation, right? I took my children to, to, through the wilderness. It was supposed to be 11 days, but it was 40 days. Did God, did God 40 years, I mean, 40 years. Did God not know that it was going to be 40 years? We can ask that question later. God made rain pour 40 days and 40 nights uh, during the time of Noah. And then he hid his people in a hawk. In an hawk. And then when uh, uh, Noah sent the bird out, kept going back and forth. He did not even 
think of anything. The water dried up. It says it took 40, 40, another 40 days, right? And for him to even step out of the hack, another 40 days. There is something God is doing with that number. 40 is a time where people are taking through the valley. They are taking through pains, trials, tests. And then a new beginning, a regeneration begins. A new life begins. A new thing begins. It took them out of the wilderness after he had tested them and humbled them and some even died in there for those that will live in flesh in this time that we are in as God began to take us through the Red Sea to get to the promised land which is the new Jerusalem some might die some might lose a leg some might lose a hand but if you I am talking to you whatever you must do to get there if you have to lose a leg the Bible says if it's your eyes that is a problem them to you. Remove it. Huh? If it's your hand, cut it off. Huh? Move. If you have to crawl, crawl. If you have to swim in that water, make sure. He already told you, I am with you. I am within you. The water cannot swallow you up. It will not drown you. All I see about you is get into the promised land. And that must be your focus. Your inheritance must be your focus. When you are going into a new life, Flesh cannot go with you. Flesh cannot go with you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the Lord will be exalted in all nations. I'll be exalted on the earth. The Lord of hosts, he says, is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. <laughs> Ma, when do you want me to? Give me a time. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hey. Let me just touch upon some things. You see. We have come here before God. Some come from different reasons. Some come for their life to change. Totally change and transform. Some come just because they want to tap from something. Some come because of us. But this gospel is not to draw men to us. It's to draw men to Messiah. I draw all men to myself. Though he puts his power and anointing on his own. So that you may come to believe. And he does so miraculous things through them. But the focus must not be on us. Must be on the power of God. The moving power that is able to save and redeem you from the pit of hell. Where the enemy or the devil wants you to remain. Please. Please. My sisters. My brother. You might know us. You might not know us. But I want you to know God when you step out of that door. I want you to know God for your own self when you step out of that door. I just don't want you to change. I want you to be transformed. Being transformed is your heart being new. The flaws that I was talking about remain in the flesh. It's of the flesh, not of the spirit. But until you start seeing yourself as a spirit, because your God is a spirit... And image you in his image, you will continue to live in the flesh. You are spirit. Living on this earth, you are spirit. Detach yourself from the flesh. You see, a lot of us are seeking for a Messiah. In our husbands, our children. Come and save me from this mess. Save me from this shame. Save me from my debt. Save me from this and that and this and that. <laughs> they were made just like you. <laughs> the Messiah is the anointed one. That gives the anointing. That gives the power. Hmm? You put a man in the place of Christ. Hmm. I'll show you something in that woman of the world. You put a man in the place of Christ. Why do you think that 
<laughs> Why do you think that this woman, right? <laughs> she already said it that she has carries some quality, some character that some people don't know. Why do you think? Have you ever questioned? She tried the first time, he failed. Second time, third time. And she didn't give up. She just kept. If she did not meet with Jesus, she would still keep going, living in that fornication and immorality and all that thing. Most of us, if we had not met with Jesus or had that encounter with Jesus, because having that encounter with Jesus is being sold out to Jesus. Some of you know of Jesus, but you have not met with Jesus. This woman was in a conversation with the Messiah. And she said, I, I have heard that the Messiah will come. She knew of the Messiah, but she did not have the Messiah. The Messiah was not of her. She wasn't yet of the Messiah. The Messiah know of you. You've heard of him. But to truly know him, is to give you your heart because why it is your heart that god speaks to it is your heart that god communicates without your heart there is no communication between you and god trust me why do you think that when your heart is gone you are dead where the new birth starts from is the heart home. when jesus said ah you will be born again nicodemus was like what are you talking about? Rabbi, what are you talking about? So, what? I'm going to reshape myself and then put myself back in the stomach of my mother. In the stomach of my mother. And then she will go back and give birth to me. What are you talking about? Lack of understanding. What are you talking about? But Jesus had to open his sight. That the birth I'm talking about... The recreation starts from the heart. It's the heart. Your heart, you must take everything you have known before take it out and allow him. And allow him to give you a new one. You see, just as God made another man out of man, that is how God will make another heart out of that heart. But it will be a new one. What is it filled with? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The, the Bible says that you are the remnant of the Spirit. You are the remnant of the Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. For those of you, I'm still waiting on that man to do this. I'm still waiting on that man to do that. When God has done everything for you already. God is waiting on you to do what you got to do and stop waiting on another man to do what he has already completed in you. The man, woman, don't complete you. Children don't complete you. The house don't complete you. The cars don't complete you. The job that you want to have so bad don't complete you. God already completed you. I found you. I hate my parents. They didn't do this. They didn't do that. Blame everything on other people but yourself. You are responsible for your own action and the way you live your life. Let me tell you something. Some people believe that once something is destined to happen, it will happen. Like life. The choices that you make can reshape or reshape or form your steps or where you arrive to. It's God's will. My will, right? If it's my will, I write a will, I can change it and it's still my will. It doesn't change my will. They won't call it something else. They won't say, uh, dividend amendment of will, will, will transform that. No, no, they will still call it a will. And I have the power to change it the way I want. And because we cannot question him, is why we still call it a will. The will of the Father. The steps. The, well, some people have been promised long life and prosperity. 
But there goes their glory in the grave. Cut short. They never lived the life. They struggled in tears and they died because they didn't understand their identity, their true identity. They are spirits living in this world. It is your flesh that cannot live forever. But your spirit, your soul, will live forever. It is your, it, the soul of a man that carries the spirit that burns in hell on living heaven. It is not you that you are. It's not this you. That is why you're going to be giving a new body. Because this, this body, this one, cannot enter the kingdom of God. It's filthy. <laughs> the nature, the nature in you, the nature of the man, Adamic nature, that nature, that nature, we can call it Adamic nature. The nature had been before the beginning. God made good. God made evil. Why do you think he put it in a tree? Don't touch this. God has a blueprint and no one can change it. Christ was not a plan B. He already died in the spirit before he came to die 2,000 plus years ago. If you like, be a theologian and break it and say when Adam failed, then Jesus, God thought I would send Jesus. No, God thought he would send Jesus before Adam came. You were living in the heavenly realm before you came in your mother's womb. Some of you already came to a world. You lived, you didn't get it right. He sent you back to get it right. So are you going to miss it again? Are you going to me? What? Tell me I'm preaching heresy. I mean, I don't walk by what I see in this world or ways of men. I go by the spirit, what the spirit of God teaches me. Some people call it heresy that there's nothing else outside this Bible. Is this the old Bible? Sorry. When the Bible says don't hide to it, don't take away from it, it means don't manipulate my word. Get understanding. Don't manipulate my word. Does not mean that I cannot add to my word. If God could speak to the disciples after the Torah, why do you think he would not speak to this generation? If we could make more Bible, they will add your life, your story to it. But it will be too big. You don't need all that. Your story is in the Bible. What is the Bible? It's not a book. It's just the word and the law of God. The precepts of God. And the teachings of God. And life events, histories. The ways of God. How he works with every one of us. Don't see yourself outside the word of God. You are in this word of God. And that is why you must live right by the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> No one can fill that void or Christ. There is a void. Even with everything you've put together, everything you've been able to achieve, there's still a void. I thought that because I, I, I went through so much in the hands of men, I always thought that, oh, when God finally settles me, ha, I'll be so joyful. Hey, that's when the war began. Hmm. Huh. Let me save that because of time. <laughs> Only if, listen, let me leave that thing for now. Let me tell you something. Let, let, let's, let's reason together. Let's reason together. Uh, sorry, I know the camera is off, but let's, let's reason for a second. I want you to see something. You're here on earth, whether married or married right but there's a reason why god is married to you i need you to pull out the speck in your eyes pull out the log if it's a log get it out and i need us to have a clear man to understand this that your first husband is god your holy husband is god I said you might be married or unmarried. Your only husband is God. And you are only married to God through Christ. The only thing that bounds you to God is Christ. It's the blood. It's the blood. Sephora. 
she said to Moses, you are my husband by blood. Most people can't really explain that side. I, do, I can't tell you that I can explain it. But I, I, I know that that has to do with God. Her relationship between God, Christ, and us. Why do God have to ask for blood all the time for the remission of our sins? It's by blood. Without blood, there is no saving you. So if, if blood is tying you to God and you dismiss that blood, then you, you are from the bloodline of the devil. He says, look at your father, the devil is been sinning from the beginning. But until you begin to see that I'm married to an holy God, I'm married to a God that is holy, pure, has no one sin in him. And there is this Christ that is pure. Has no one sin in him. Even though it was a cost on the cross for you and I. When you begin to see that intertwined relationship. That God is my holy husband. is my holy source. Is my holy, I'm married to him. I'm, I'm fearful if he gives me a certificate of divorce. I'm fearful if he rejects me. I'm fearful if he cuts me off. There are some that God has cut him off. I'm fearful if you begin to see everything that you will see in your husband, in God. Everything you will do, the mission. Mission in your marriage. Marriage is a mission. There is a mission in everything that God has created. Subdue the head. Take it. Replenish it. Multiply it. There is a mission. There is a mission. What is your mission in the body of Christ? God has given you a mission. Somebody say, I'm not called. I'm not a pastor. I'm not this and that. If you are married to God, there is a mission for you on her. God does not just pop out babies for something that, you know, just, just to send you to the world and do what? No, it's us that can be popping anyhow. God always has a reason that he sends any man. Whether for honorable use or dishonorable use. Start to see everything in the likeness of God. He helps. When your husband is running short, it will help you. Your husband is not the savior. He has his responsibility, but he's not the savior. Your wife is not the savior. Your children are not the savior. Jesus is the one that went on the cross. He says to reconcile you with your original husband. To reconcile you with the original husband. We, I can't go there now. The book of Ezra. Go and see when God gave them a certificate of devotion. And anything God would do, he will make man leave it. The story of Hosea. Go see he will make man leave it. Ezekiel, the servant of God, he could not even mourn his own wife. He had to lay on his side for 40 days. Number 40 again. He had to lay on his side on 40 days. He could not even mourn. The breath that God breathed in you. And for those of you that are still living in the world saying that there is no God. The breath that God breathed in you is what ties you to God. And if you cut that breath off, you're gone. There's no connection anymore. The connection you have right now with God is a breath that ties you together. But in Christ you breathe. In Christ you live. In Christ you have everything on your being. When you're praying in your secret place, say, God, my husband, I need you today. God, my lover, I need you today. Holy Spirit. A ah, woman of God said something about the Holy Spirit. You cannot see heaven without the Holy Spirit. Oh. He says, in the Holy Spirit, we are sealed. We are sealed. He said, even in this woman of the world, John 4, he says, my seal 
is within him. Or maybe I'm mistaken. My seal is within this Christ. <laughs> My children are not taking care of me. My job is not good enough. It's because your mindset is still set on the wrong things. I was there, I can tell you. I cry for, no, for things that are not just before God. Things that don't make sense before God. Things that don't move him, they don't matter. They are nothing to him. Let me tell you, whatever that is nothing to your God should be nothing for you. There's nothing to have for him to do. All you just have to do is stay married to him. And in all you, that you desire, you will fulfill it. God is not a magician. He's over a magician. He created the magicians. You put your focus on the witches, on the wishes, witches, warlocks, the grandmother that wants to kill all your children. But what about the light of God? What about the light of God? Where the light of God is, there is power. And when the witches and wizards sees the light, they bow to it. You see, the story of the woman at the well is not just for kononia, for communion. It's also for God to spread his light through a vessel. You are a vessel of light. That woman, he says, what good is it when a light is covered with a basket or a bowl? It's supposed to be upon the city hill. So God, Jesus went to that city, well, if I can't preach this, then glory be to God. So Jesus um, went to that city, the Samaria. He wasn't even going there. Hallelujah. Jesus was not going there. Hallelujah. He went there. I want to go set my light upon the city. But God always needs a man. He always needs a vessel. You don't have to be qualified. Sometimes I look at myself and I say, God, are you doing this through this mess? Through this filthy thing? Are you doing all that? You see, the, the enemy has tried and tried. <laughs> You're saying it. The enemy has tried and tried to bring your past and all that stuff. But God, I look at the enemy in the face. I say, oh, please. There is no more condemnation for me because I'm in Christ Jesus. And I do not walk by the flesh. I walk by the spirit. I can see the things of the spirit. And I know that it says that he has erased all the unwriting of powers of principality. All the evil unwriting that was written against me in Colossians 2.14. He says it's been wiped away. I have a clean slate. And God said, if they don't stop, go and read Colossians 2, 14, 15. If they do not put a stop to their oppression over your life, condemning you, coming against you, he says, I will make them a public spectacle. You can note that in your Bible. It's there in Colossians. Hallelujah. Listen, you have to get to a place of colonia with God where you go on your knees and begin to stare your eyes upon the heavens. I look up to the hills of the Lord. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the maker, the heaven and the earth. The woman at the well, she struggled for so long. She struggled for such a time as that because she did not know who her God was. She did not know to look upon the hill. She was so stunned on religion, on sitting upon the mountain of that of Jacob where they built the well of that of Abraham or Jacob where they made all their sacred things and told them that this place has been anointed. This is where you worship not knowing that the anointing is in someone above. Someone above. 
You need to get to that place uh, where, you, where you walk off the mountain. I'm not condemning those that go to the mountain. I can go to the mountain if God directs me to. She already said it's not the location. I can go anywhere if I'm directed. I can go to the ocean. If you like, call me mommy water. No, mommy water will bow to me when I get to the ocean. Hakabashata. It is about someone. He says, worship in truth and in spirit. Who is the truth? Christ is the truth. And who is the spirit? The spirit is the spirit of the living God. So you must align with the Christ and align with the Holy Ghost for you to worship in spirit and in truth. So the worship is not about a thing. It's about a who. Shatabasata. It's about a who. So she, you, you, you need to get to a place uh, where you step out of the mountain. If you are in the valley and say, I'm not even on a mountain. I'm in this valley and I've, I am still there. I've been there for a while. It is time for you to look up. Even in the valley, the light can still shine. Uh, even in the valley, God can still visit you. Uh, even in the cave, uh, God can still visit you. Elijah, what are you doing here? Look up to the hills of the Lord. When it says look up to the hills, the hills is the heavens of God. It's the throne of grace. You look up to the hills. It says that's where your help comes from. The maker of what you see. The maker of what you don't see. The maker of you yourself. And everything you, you've acquired. And everything that is your possession. And everything that you own. No matter what it is, he is the maker of all. All things were made through him and nothing was not made that was made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look up to the hills. That is when your help comes from. You can never go wrong. Going low and looking up. No matter where you choose to worship, you can never go wrong when your highs, I'm preaching to you, when your highs is not here, but your highs is here. You can never go wrong. If you keep looking at me, you will go wrong. Go. <laughs> hey, because I am wailing and crying in my secret place. God, take this away from me. I'm struggling. God, take this away from me. Because I remember your word that says, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with any blemish, uh, I cannot come into your kingdom. I cannot come before you. Uh, why do you think uh, Hester was able to go into the palace? Because she had the mercy and the favor of God. You need the mercy and the favor of God to be able to go before God. And the mercy and the favor lies in what had been done upon the cross. Hallelujah. It's all about the mercy of God. I will show it to whom I please. You don't qualify for it. It's not something you walked for. It's not something you can never walk for. You will always run short. Hallelujah. Now you have come to him. Let the world know who your father is. Who is your father? Who is your father? Who is your father? <laughs> She was so stunned upon the mountain. This is where. This is where. I, you want to tell me you have a well. You have a well. This deep well of my forefathers that they gave us. They went through hell and stuff to make this hell. Now you, this thing that looks like water, unkept somebody, coming to tell me water. Assessing Christ up and down. Come to tell me what. Please. There's nothing you can tell me that is better than this well I've been drinking. But this is, she forgot that that is the well she has been drinking and her life still remains that same. That way. That rubbish way. That shameful way. Hey! 
Many of us have been in somewhere so long, doing the same thing, the same way. No result, no change, no transformation, no freedom. And you're still there drinking every day. Are we goats? Or are we children of the kingdom? The Bible says that these people are goats. Goats don't listen. They don't obey the word of God. I'm not abusing you. I'm only preaching the scripture. I said, are we? I'm talking to everybody. I'm preaching the scripture. I'm not calling us goats. It's the scripture. Hallelujah. You are not a goat. You are a son. You are a son of a kingdom. You are of royalty. Look at your royal garments on you. See the glory of God on you. You are beautiful and wonderfully made. That woman didn't know that. Because they told her she was ugly. They told her she was not fruitful, barren. They called her so many names that she was a prostitute moving from one man to another. Where is the man in this prostitution? Cannot be found. It's always the woman. Because you carry great glory. Hallelujah. This same well that she has been drinking for so long. He says, I don't have anything to draw from with. I don't have anything to draw with. When you have Jesus with you. Do you need anything to draw with? When Jesus, <laughs> she said, it's too deep. I don't have anything to draw with. Ah, this well is too deep. When you have the one that calls upon the deep from the deep. I don't have any, what, you want to draw into what? The same water pot that she finally dropped on the floor and left? I'm looking at the time. I'll leave that message. I may be round up from somewhere. <laughs> you. It's too deep. <laughs> she still did not catch the revelation in front of her. Jesus is the revelation of God. And not until you have that true revelation will you see God or know God. <laughs> and. She wants to draw into what? That cistern. That water tank. That is, cistern is like a water tank, like a reservoir. Right? So you are like a reservoir, right? You are a temple of God that must be filled. But this temple, in this temple, is stinky. It's filthy, it's still. That reservoir, that water tank is like a, 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 a still water tank. Smell is thinking with mold, with, with all sort of fungi. Bacteria. That cistern can break. That cistern can, can, can rust. So you need something to fill what the Messiah is going to give you with you. You want to bring something. <laughs> but the Messiah was in front of her. She didn't need anything with her to be f for, for Christ to pour anything into because Christ was there to pour into her. Not into a thing, but into that one that mattered to him. Christ was already waiting at the well. He was already waiting. She went at the sixth hour. Where she knew truly that no one was going to be there. Usually in that culture, they go, they go in the evening most times or early in the morning. But in the evening most times. But she went at that hour because she, she was tired. She was tired. She didn't want to hear from those other women. Their chit chat, secluding her, looking down on her. She was tired. Guess what? She was tired because what? Read. It says Jesus was weary and hungry. 
She was tired because Jesus was tired. Jesus was tired. Hallelujah. Right here. Jesus left Judea and departed again to Galilee. So his mission, Jesus had a mission, was to go where? To Galilee. And departed from Judea. So Jesus departed and on his mission, the, the father reminded Christ, you all, I know I sent you to Galilee, but, oh, come on. I need you to do my will, some, something for me that I've written down for a long time. It's been on my plate. God said in heaven, when he looked upon Daniel, ah, but I've answered this prayer, I've released it. What's holding on to it? What is holding on to this? There are forces in this life that don't want your glory to shine. They are holding captive to your glory and your destiny, to your greatness, because they can see you in the realm of the spirit. That once you are released, that the kingdom, that the gates of hell can never prevail against the church. All this is all about a church. And God said, come on. Uh, may the Lord remember you. In that place, that, that valley, that place of pain that you've been crying to God about. May the Lord remember you today. Just as God opened the book of remembrance unto Mordecai and honored him and clothed him royal robes and lifted him up and promoted him. Same thing the Lord will do to you and for you and your household today in the mighty name of Jesus. And God prompted Christ. I know I sent you to Galilee, but I need you to go through. This is not the route that you usually go through because we have nothing to do with these people. Their mode of worship was different. This one argued this is the way. That one argued that's the way. But Jesus went through Samaria to show them that I am the way. Neither you nor them knows the way because you worship what you don't know. But I am the way. The truth that gives life. Thank you, Jesus. So he went through Samaria <laughs> and Jesus wanted to meet her alone. I am hungry, but I'm not hungry for that food. I've told you to go and fetch for me. My food is souls. For the game is souls. Let me tell you, as a Christian, when you get to heaven, the first thing the Father will ask you is, who did you bring with you? Where are the souls? Where are the souls? Are they in the grave, perished? Or are they with you? Glorious with you wearing that glorious garment and rejoicing. Where are the souls? What do you think the ministry of reconciliation is? We've all been called to it. You don't have to be an evangelist to do it. My food is your soul, says the Father. My food is your soul. My food is your soul. What will it profit a man if he gains his whole world and lose his soul? Because the soul, your soul is the food of the Father. You know why your soul is the food of the Father? He says a breath into them and they became a living soul. Your soul is the food of the Father because when you make it to his kingdom and you have access and they open the door the angels open the door unto you and you sit or you kneel and you begin to worship the Lord you are feeding God you are feeding God your worship feeds the heart of God and that is why you are food for God thank you Jesus so Jesus needed to eat 
And it was tired for that woman. And she went with all their long conversation. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then there's this thing I want us to take note of right here. Jesus said to the woman, give me a drink. He just didn't go there and say, I want to give you this living water and everything like that. He caught our attention by saying, give me a drink. Father is asking you, give me a drink. I need your service. I need you to draw water for me first. <laughs> it's always the other way around, right? Because he's the Messiah. But he says, I came to serve you. You did not, no, 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 no. I came to serve you. Not to be served. So he's that humble. Give me a drink. Give me your service. Give me your heart. That's what the father is saying. Give me your heart. Give me your heart. If you say, Father, I've given you myself. There's a song that says, Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Lord, give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Give me you. Everything else can wait. The cars, the house, the child, the marriage. The rosy life that you are seeking for. Give you, Father, give me you. Give me you so that you may have me. Give me you. Give me you. Give me a drink. Listen. I was not always like this. I was not always like this. I was tough in the world, bold in the world, doing the things of the world. I was radical in the clubhouse. I was a radical for the world. I was radical for the things of the world, living a life of mess, moving from men to men in fornication. Sometimes I sit down in my quiet place praying to God and, and I begin to have reflection of my past. And I begin to see how gracious and wonderful the Lord had been in my life. And I begin to think, God, you picked me up from the gods as you picked me up from the mess. You changed my rags and gave me a garment of glory. Me that I've been written up by men, men telling me that who is your God? Choose, am I not your God? Putting myself in a place of oppression and ridicule, a place of embarrassment. And the reason why I cry when I pray to my Lord in my secret place and I remember these things is because I say, God, I did not have sight. I could not see. Now I can see that I've been wretched when I thought I was rich. I have been poor when I thought I had it all. I have been poor. Now I can see that I was in darkness and I didn't have no single light in me. Even when after my fornication, I go to the church to worship the Lord. I did not have the true light. Now I can see. How wretched I have been. Now I can see. I begin to see. How crazy I have been. But God gave me eyes to see. 
When you begin to see and you have an encounter with Jesus, you begin to thank him for where he has brought you out of. Because I could have been dead in that place. Who knows what they are stolen from me? They stole the glory. Look at me. I was I meant to be great. Called to be nations, betting nations. But the devil wanted to steal that from me. And that was why he began to utter my step to fill relationship. Men that were not of God do not be equally yoked. Come out from among them. Do not ally with those that are half the world. And people of my past will look at me and say, You have to get to a place where people will look at you and say, No, this is of God. It cannot be of man. This is of God. When you start, they'll look at you, she's playing around. She's lying. This one that I know that sleeps with men, sleep with women, sleep around. Do this. This one that I know. I'm just talking generally now. But yes, the first one I said is true about me. Sleep with men, sleep with women. Why? I was demonized so that I would not see the great destiny before me. I was not a mother. I was not a stealer. But I'm saying that there are some people, you're a stealer. You're a murderer. You're a prostitute on the street. You don't even have to stand on the street to become a prostitute. Fornicator is a prostitute. So I was a prostitute. I said it. Did God not redeem Rahab, the prostitute? Come to him. All you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And I will give you rest. My yoke is light. Even though my body is easier, my yoke is light. You see, he said, Take up my yoke. He's not saying that I will, I will carry the load for you. He's saying, Come, I will teach you how to carry the load. I will teach you what roundabouts have you made in your life. What corners have you caught? He says, come to me. I will clean you up. I will bring you out. Many are there choking on drugs every day because the void is there. They need Christ. They are preachers, ma. Yes. They drink themselves to stupor. Preachers. You see, when I was in the world... I would drink and few times I want to say few times because that didn't go well with me. I would try weed because people were trying weed. It didn't go well with my sister. I, I got sick when I tried like three times or so. I had to take antibiotic and that was it. But I would drink to the point that I'm mixing our drinks and I'm still like, you know, I, or sometimes I would scatter all over the place a life of shame. <laughs> A life of shame. When God brought... You see, I've always loved God. I've always gone to the church. Many are like that in a church, struggling with addiction, blinded, sitting under the light, but still blind. Being carnal, living a carnal life. I was a carnal Christian. I loved God. I loved prayer. I loved the things of God. And they would bring prophecy and say, you are a prophetess of God and this and that. I'll be like, Pfft. you know, but sometimes God would take things from us. And when I had the wake up call, even though you see, at 10, I started preaching at 10. I started preaching the message of repentance at 10. I gave my life to Christ at 10. From a Muslim house. My father was the Muslim. My mother was a Christian. Thank God for my mother. God will use someone. Thank God for my mother. We've always gone to church. Never, the things of Islam never interested me. And my father never forced us. He never interested us. And preaching that, my mother would say, leave her alone. I was radical at 10. Disturbing all my brothers and sisters. Telling my mom, hey, I don't want to wear pants. When you travel to London, just buy me my dress. Uh, please. 
radical at 10. And the devil, and then we moved to my father's house and some things happened, darkness. They said, there's no business between light and darkness. Some things occurred there that brought darkness into my heart. And when you have a home with different wives, things happen. They mess with destinies. You see, when I went back to the world from knowing God, I went back with full force. Full force. And when God took me to it, took me back with force. The kingdom of God suffered violence and it suffered it by force. Some of you need to come out with fire by force. You wonder I can't do this. I'll be by force. You will come out. You see, when I had that encounter, God separated me three months from my job. I had to take FMLE. Separated me from the church. So I was going to a white garment church. It separate, I'm not condemning white garment church. If they call me there, I'll go and preach there today. Yeah. If you want to separate from me because I go to white garment church and preach, that's your problem. I have more understanding. Wherever God will take me to, to shed the light of the gospel is where I will go. But anyway, I was there and God said, come out from among them. That place is not clean. If they had God, I'm sure I would have been there. Because it was at a white, another white government church that everything that God was buried here at 10, 11, 12 was a walking back to life. So it's not about the white garment church. Hallelujah. So he said, uh -uh, don't go to church anymore. Don't go to work. At first, I didn't know what was happening, though. For real. I didn't know. I wasn't aware. Then the relationship I was into started crumbling at that time. That's a boom. Everything boom. But within that time, I already met my husband, my pastor. And we were just friends. And all we talk about is the word. The word, I'm telling you. So we were like, ah, I love this man who was talking to me about the word. Nothing of interest of marriage. I don't know about him, but for me, I was like, you know, you already have this type of taste and level that you're like, who is going to go here? Nah. So my focus was somewhere. But God wanted to shift my focus. Jesus wanted to shift our focus. Our focus was on a failed relationship. Our focus was on our shortcomings. Those things, those label. The Bible did not mention a name. Some of us were in no name among men, but they put labels on us. She had labels. She didn't have names. She had labels. But Jesus come to tell you that you are what I call you to be. Just like it is the I am that I am. Your name is after the I am. And whatever I call you is what you will be called. I have called you the mother of nation. That is who you are. Tomorrow if I call you my evangelist, that is who you are. If I use you as my apostle, that is who you are. If I call you as my prophet, Abraham my prophet. They saw him as a brother to Sarah. But no, God said, this is Abraham my prophet. I speak to him. This is Abraham, my friend. So whatever God will call you is what you are. Don't worry about what the world is calling you. They call, even now, they call me different names. She thinks she's self-righteous. No, because they don't know where God took me from. She thinks she's holy. She's preaching holy and righteousness and all that. What else do you want me to preach? The message of the gospel it's not just about love. Because in that love there is righteousness and there is holiness. And you must have it. Or you will not see God. Let them be lying to you and be saying, I have grace for everything. Grace does not work in heaven. It only works here for men on earth. I know 
where God brought me out of. So I cannot joke with this. Even when I'm struggling, I still cannot joke with this because I know I have no other choice. I have no other way. Did she know when, when she got transformed from within, even though she was still the same person on the outside, when she got transformed from within and she ran, she ran to the same man that was oppressing her, abusing her, ridiculing her. She said, look at me now. I am no more that person I used to be. But I am now God. I have now come to see what God has called me to be. And that which he has called me to be, that good works that he has started in you and I, he shall also bring it to completion in him. I now know, I can now see that I've been called as a mighty and great evangelist. I have brought the good news for you. I met a man that is deeper than the well that you and I have been drinking from. Come and see with your eyes. If God can open your eyes and give you insight, maybe when you see him, you will believe. And when they got there, they told her, we do not wholly believe because you said. But we now believe because we see for ourselves. Hallelujah. Know where God brought you out of. The children of Israel, most of them perished in that wilderness because they did not remember where God had brought them out of. The things God had delivered them from. Because, let me tell you, my life was like a life of slavery. Enslaved to the abuse of men. To the ways men would treat me. You see, I never really had a, 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 a love, a kind of God, a fatherly love from an earthly father. My father is not like he's a bad person. He just did not know how to love his children. Because what you experience is what you become. And what you become is what you are going to pass on to your children. And thank God that for me, God gave me children that are filled, so much filled with love. So sometimes I'm uptight. My children will say, losing up. They don't tell me losing up, but what they say, what they do, will lose me up. And I remember, I have to show them that love that I have now. So I teach them the love of Christ. I teach them that love of the Father. So I didn't really have that love. So what do you do? You want to mirror that love in another man. But as far as friends are concerned, I was always this uh, person of justice. I stand for people's justice. I'm ready to fight anybody, any man, anybody. This is wrong and this is wrong. Ah. So when God called me a Deborah, I knew who I was. They say there are no judges anymore. No, they are judges of this time. They are. They are prophets of this time. They are judges of this time. They are pastors of this time. In every generation, God raised the people that he has raised in past generations. What do you think these judges were? Gideon, Deborah. They did not judge by the flesh. It's scriptural in the book of John. It says judge righteously. So we judge according to the art of God. We don't judge, I don't judge you because I don't like you. Because I, don't, I, I, I perceive you to be something. No, 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 no. I go by God's word. And I tell you, if you do this, if you do that, the word of God say you will not see the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So... You have to know where the Father brought you out of and where, where. That's where your, your insight is very important. Where the Father is taking you. Because you see, in your seeking, in your seeking God, God is already seeking you. They say, seek and you shall find. But God is already seeking you, meaning he's already waiting for you to seek him and then find him. So as you're seeking God, know that God is already seeking you. 
As you are thinking in your life, this is not the kind of life I want to be living. I want a change in my life. I want something to change. I don't want to continue to live like this. Know that the Father is already seeking you. He's a God that sees. He's a, he sees you. He knows you don't want to be in that mess. He knows you don't have that rebellious heart. He knows that, no, 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 that heart needs help. So he's already seeking you. You didn't come to God by yourself. He's already seeking you. Hallelujah. Let me round up. Because woman of God is going to another program. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So, at the well, we can also see that there was intimacy. The intimacy brought about the change, the transformation of that woman. That she left that water port she's used to used to taking that water pot to the well at that time maybe six hours that she always goes to fetch that water every day she left it some of us that's what we need to do to leave the water pot and run run to the place God has sent you hallelujah the journey is not going to be easy I'm telling you the journey when you had seen me before so I, I had a woman of God um, reach out to me and say, oh, I saw one of your videos from 2016 and your hair was on fleek. Your makeup was on fleek. And truly, truly, when you see me, <laughs> you won't know it was me. <laughs> you know? And then again, you know, I just had a baby, so I have to look certain ways. Okay. Um... So she said, you, I, you know, serving God does not mean that you can't look like that. And I said, woman of God, let's face where God has brought out us from. I'm not the one taking things away from myself. When it takes, when the Holy Spirit begins to sift things out, you can't help it. You won't just have taste for it anymore. If you stand here, you don't cover your hair. I used to minister without covering my hair. Or maybe I will still minister without covering my hair. But my own is special revelation. We don't compare ourselves to ourselves. I don't know where God is bringing you off. I don't know what stage you are in. I don't know where he's walking to. My own is preach the truth. Wherever he finds you, whatever time or year he finds you, glory be to God because he takes the glory. No man can. Hallelujah. No man can. I try to struggle. Oh, Father, I'm... I'm going, I want to cover my head, Jerry. I want to, you know. But when he has showed me, I, before he showed me, it took, in his word, it took me there. I kept pondering on this thing. And I will go to uh, Corinthians, I mean, um, 1 Corinthians uh, 11, or 2 Corinthians 11, one of the two. I will go there and uh, I will read it, I will read it to get understanding that. Is this thing just culture? I want to know. Is this thing just culture? But and then I will have this experience when I'm praying. The father will tell me, Go and cover your head. I'll be like, Okay, I'll cover my head. But it, when he began to tell me why, and then he showed me the last time I saw that was I entered the sanctuary without covering my head. And then he told me to cover my hair, I think. And then tell somebody else in the church to cover their head. He said, look, she's not covering her head. Tell her to cover her head. And when I saw that, I said, you know what? No more struggling. So after I started to obey, two years after, somebody else, a prophet brought the word to my husband, not even to me, that anytime your wife is ministering, tell her to cover her head. God knows me, he formed me. He knows why I need to cover my head. It might not be for you, but it might be for me. Hallelujah. I went to minister somewhere in Atlanta, and a man of God saw it on Facebook. And he reached out to me, called me, and said, Woman of God, I don't know where you got that shawl from, but this is what the Lord wants me to tell you. That when you cover your head and you're ministering, your angels, they come. Thank you. Thank you. Your angels, they come around and begin to what? Walk wonders in the life of people. 
Because so we don't need any argument. Whether, okay, people like Katrin Kumar, they cover their hair. No, God knows how he wants to walk with them. Walk with them. Another revelation, which I know, that it aligns with what that prophet told me, is, is in there in the book of Corinthians 11. I mean, 1 Corinthians 11. He says that because, um, Paul said, because of the angels, not because of submit. He said, whether it's right for us to cover our head before God, you judge for yourself. Whether it was a cultural thing or whatever, God knows your ministry. He knows how he's going to work for you. He uses people without covering their hair. I get upset when people on Facebook that are not nurtured in the world come and say people will go to hell because they're not covering their head. Do you know that this hair will not enter the kingdom of God? Let's gain understanding. One thing is honor. Submission. You will go to the kingdom of God, but maybe God will question you in some, in some areas. It's not left for us. But for you not to gain understanding and say people will go to hell because they don't pay tithe, they don't cover their head. You are still like that woman at the well with that water pot without understanding. We need spiritual understanding. Hallelujah. We need spiritual understanding. I may the Lord grant it to us. I said I was running up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, now, this is where we are. I'm rounding up for real. Your purpose as a woman is not just to serve your man, a man, your husband, your children, in your marriage. Please, let's get that right. I've had a sister call me one time and said, I don't like all those preachers that are preaching saying that... Uh, a woman does not have a purpose when she's just uh, a housewife. Yeah, that was a word. That stay home um, wives that don't work, that don't have do any other thing, that they don't have a purpose. That people are saying that they don't have a purpose. They are preaching. Preachers are that they should stop saying that. That God might just call you to that marriage. Oh, please, go and read the Bible. In the beginning, you can say. That they fell into sin and God gave a cause. No, Jesus has come to correct it. Okay? You now have that dominion back. We need to get that. We have that dominion back. He told you, I made them in male and female. Subdue. Take over. Replenish. And multiply. Even men. I want to speak to men. Some men think that they cannot stand in the role of women. It's your responsibility. No. Some women are giving a heart of a man. Some men are also giving a heart of a woman. Are we the maker? No, 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 no. We are not. Let me tell you. If you are a mother and all you do is cook, take care of your children and your husband, and you don't at least have a ministry of reconciliation, you have failed. Yes. I'm talking to Christians. Oh. I'm talking to Christians. If you cannot step out and reconcile another child of somebody else to this God that you say you know. What do you think Deborah was doing under the tree? If you cannot step out of your kitchen, take some time out. I know you are so busy. And say, ah, I see that child wandering about. I see that stubborn child giving our parents, his parents, problems. Let me go there and reconcile that child's heart to God. Some people are doing mind my business in marriage. You are not purposeful. That's not the only thing God called you to. Yes, God is a God of principle. Your ministry starts in our home. Our ministry starts in our home. It starts in our not your household, though. your household or family could be your siblings. No, 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 no. Some of your siblings you will have to separate from to get to heaven. I'm talking about the family, the gift God has given your husband, your children. Your ministry starts from there, no doubt about it. But I'm telling you that you have not fulfilled purpose if you don't reconcile souls 
to God. If you don't stand in God for other people's children, you don't start the woman in the church, you don't step up where you're supposed to step up. Do you know who you are as a woman? There is growth in you as a woman. In you lies the growth of the church. In you lies the growth of the kingdom. So your purpose, let me tell you all our purpose, the main purpose, whether it's taking care of your children, your husband, or stepping out, or stepping in, or stepping further into nations, our main purpose, whether you're a woman or a man, is to do the will of the Father. That's it. Some men, they've used it as a weapon of chains to lock women down. Your purpose is just to me and these children. When God says go to nation, or some, some, some men will say it's not yet time. Yeah, God, God truly made the men our head. He gave, it, he gave them some kind of authority over you. So when they say it's not yet time, yours is not to say, ah, it's not yet time, I'm, I'm flying. No, 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 no. This is how to play humble. Go before God. Say, God, touch his heart. Show him. Reveal to him. So that he can let me go. Let me tell you. Sometimes it's not your husband that is doing that. Sometimes it's not your wife that is telling you you cannot go and fulfill. Sometimes it's the enemy that goes into them. Trying to use them as a weapon to hold you down. So you have to be in spirit. The devil said no, it's not yet time. And God said, it's time. And the devil is speaking through the voice of your husband. But there is a sound and a voice that will shut down every voice. Uh, speaking against your destiny and uh, speaking against your release. Uh, you carry the womb of a woman. Uh, if you carry a womb of a woman, say, woman brought out of something must be brought out of you. Hallelujah. You are a part of God, woman. Men are not the only ones that are image of God. Some people misunderstand what Paul said. That when he said men are image of God. Uh, or, I mean the man is the glory of God. And then the woman is the glory of man. And all that stuff. But then read further now. He said Though, that same man comes out of a woman. Hallelujah. And then he said that all of us belong to this God. <laughs> When we read, let's have understanding. So, you are a part of God to come on earth. Hallelujah. To expand and multiply the kingdom of God. You carry the power and the spirit of multiplication in you. Without you, nothing can replicate on this earth. Without you, the church cannot expand. I'm telling you. Why do you think that when the disciples talk about the church, they always use ah? They don't use him. Because they know the things of the spirit. That in the womb of a woman, the church is birth. Hallelujah. Christ is the church. And the church is birth from within him. So you carry the blessing and the glory of God. And you are to express it. Hallelujah. It is time for you to birth that glory it is time for you to break that glory. Let's be in tune with the time of God. So now the Lord is saying to you, I do not want you to know about your old life because when she dropped the water pot, everything old died right there. I want you to know about me. That is your new life. I want you to hear from me that new life that I have to give you. Hallelujah. So it is time to cross over to our newness. And may the Lord continue to help us. Because we really need to go. May the Lord continue to help us. May the Lord continue to be our helper. May the Lord take everything of the hold. Take it out of us. And push us. We must be pushed into the newness of God for our lives. May the glory of God continue to shine in your life. May the latter this glory be 
better than the former in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, everything the Lord has planted in your womb, I call for the midwives on this earth that God has assigned to this earth to come and help you bet it out. That midwife that God has assigned over your life, I call you for the right now. Deliver everything that God has brought in you. The world is waiting on you. Nations are waiting on you. The church is waiting on you. Bad it so that the kingdom of God may rise to glory. Hallelujah. May the Lord help us. Thank you, Jesus. We seal heavy word and heavy prayer by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory, Father. Hallelujah.